Someone go ahead and tell me what x dot is. You can pretty much just read it off, right? Minus, minus six. 6 a, and then my cos turns into sine. You happy with that? Okay. Need a bit of space here. Okay. I've got a displacement equation. I've got a velocity equation, and I can say, because I defined my certain moment as t equals zero, I can go to both of these and make a substitution. Right? Let's go ahead and do that. So at t equals zero, I can say, I know what the position is, I know what the velocity is. So going to here, I can say, uh, let's see here, a cos of, I'm substituting t equals zero, right? So I just get a cos alpha, the, the 6t is gone. So a cos alpha equals, this is the displacement equation, so it's 3. You okay with that? Similarly, looking at this next equation down here, I can say uh, negative 6a sine of what? 6t plus alpha, but again, I'm, I'm doing this t equals 0 business, so it's, it's alpha again, isn't it? What's that equal to? Negative, negative 20. Four, and I got that from this piece of information here. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Now this is really great. This is really nice. I substituted in t equals zero, so that's why it's gone. I have two unknowns, a and alpha, and I have two equations. So this is just, I've turned all this simple harmonic motion business into something you could have done back in year nine. This is a simple simultaneous equation setup. I could do one more thing just to make it even lazier for me, right? Before I label these one and two, I will label this one. But before I call this one two, what would you like me to do to make it easier to work with? I can, I can simplify. How am I going to simplify? Yeah, I'm going to divide both sides through by negative six. that okay? So that gives me this. A sine alpha equals four. You happy with that? I'm calling this one equation two. Now, we're used to, like, systems of linear equations. You're like, oh, I can substitute. I can, uh, what's it called? I can eliminate, right? Having a look at these two, think for a moment. I need to get rid of either alpha or a. Which do you think is easier to get rid of? A. You reckon you want to get rid of a? What would you do to get rid of a? Divide. You could divide through. You could go, uh, say, 2 divided by 1, and that your a's would cancel. And then you would get 10 alpha on the left-hand side, wouldn't you? And then you would get 4 on th 3 on the right-hand side. Did I get that right? Yeah. Now, I, I'm totally OK with that. Yeah, I got your suggestion. Technique and make it into a right angle triangle. Hmm. Interesting suggestion, Angad. Just in case you didn't catch that, right? Um, Angad's thinking about using auxiliary angle, right? I've can, I can put these two together. I've got a sum of two different sine functions, uh, sorry, wave functions, and therefore I can consider them as a single one with a shift, right? I could do that, but you know how I'm always like looking for lazier, simpler ways to do it, okay? Um, as I pointed out, this is a question where, oops, wrong color. This is a question where we can make choices. And I'm going to suggest to you, just go ahead and do that. See how it goes. I'm pretty confident you'll come up with a good answer. I, I'm also reasonably confident you'll take a while to get there. Because the auxiliary angle is a reason why there's, it's an extension one technique. I, I right? Um, you have a sine alpha is 4. And yep. you make it into a right angle triangle. Oh, I see, I see. Alpha and you have 4, 3. Yeah, 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 yeah. OK, so I could just go, all right. So I'm going to hit pause on you there, right? In order to do this, I actually kind of need both of these triangles. I need both of these together, right? This is actually, I can do this all in one fell swoop without needing to go to a diagram. You, know, you guys know how much I love a good diagram, right? Um, I love a good diagram when it helps me do something more efficiently. I think in this case, there's even a simpler algebraic way to go and just get this without even, I don't even need to divide. What are you thinking, Shub? Um, equa equation 1 squared plus equation 2 squared. Now, you can totally do either of these paths, right? And like I said, like I promised, right? When you have genuine choices, you will still get the same answer out. I wonder if anyone can see why this is such a helpful thing to do and why it avoids some of the problems that we can create if we start, say, for example, solving for alpha first. Uh, what do we get out of this, right? Can someone tell me what I get when I do this? I'm going to get a squared cos squared. That's, that's this one squared plus a squared sine squared, right? There's my left-hand side from 1 squared plus 2 squared. And then on the right-hand side, I get 9 plus 16, which is 25. 
it's almost like this question was crafted to do this, right? Uh, and this is probably why your brain started going, ooh, right angled triangles, right? Because I can see a triad here. The reason why this is helpful is once you factor out your cos squared plus sine squared, which is equal to 1, you're getting a squared equals 25. And here, while we normally are solving a quadratic and we have to think of two values here, right? I can actually specify one of them because why? What is a? It's an amplitude, right? It's an amplitude. And I've specified what it is over here, so I can say I'm only taking a positive value because an amplitude is scalar. Does that make sense? Now from here, I still do have to deal with alpha. And you can go to either of these spots here, either equation 1 or equation 2. I'm not going to completely escape this problem that I was trying to get away from, right? Uh, I'm going to go to, which one will I go to? Let's go back to equation 1. Sub a into 1. So I'm going to get here. If this is 5, cos alpha equals 3 fifths. Are you OK with that? And it's not an exact value because the 3, 4, 5 triangle doesn't give us nice angles. But it gives us an angle we can work with nonetheless. Can someone give me it in radians, please? I asked you to get your calculators out. What do you get? 9273 would do it for me. Dot, dot, dot. OK. Now, 0.9273. That's less than 1.57. That's an acute angle that your calculator just handed to you. Are you sure it's an acute angle? Like, is there anything that tells you that has to be acute? Could it not be obtuse? Or reflex? Because like, there's an infinite series of solutions to this, right? Anyone want to give me some takers? Yeah. Uh, because I thought it's the initial bank has to be between um, 0 and pi. Hmm. So Zhao's going to here, right? He's saying alpha is what we define as our phase. It's how far off we are from just starting at like uh, at a regular like you know cos function. We have to like shift across because we've already decided we didn't start at an extremity of motion, an extremity of motion. That's a good suggestion. However, I should point out, uh, does it have to be? Like, is there anything that I said here? I I'd like it to be. It, it is actually the reason why I chose this in the first place, right? But there's actually another piece of information. It's on the board right now that tells me why alpha ought to be acute in this particular situation. Morgan? Um, I was doing it um, slightly different because I didn't use cos alpha, I used tau alpha. But yep, you divided said, through. Yeah. I guess it's the same because we got two equations. Both equations are positive. If you're using 10, that represents both cos alpha and sine alpha is positive, which means have to be first quadrant. Mm. Same for this case, because we have to use the equation sort of. Okay. So our, our alpha has to be in first quadrant. Okay. Well done, Morgan. So let's think about this for a second, right? And this is not my um, this is not my favorite way of doing it, but I'll just grab onto the language that you've used. Each of your two equations here that you've started sol solving simultaneously, they give you information about where alpha has to be, right? When you have a look at this first one here, uh, cos alpha equals three fifths. That's what I get from that. So therefore, which quadrants can I possibly be in? First and fourth. When you look at this second equation here, again, I can substitute a in. I get sine alpha equals four fifths. Still positive. So which quadrants could you possibly be in? First and second. But you have to solve these simultaneously, right? It's got to be the same alpha that works for both of these. So therefore, you can actually exclude these two because they don't work for the other one. Does that make sense? So this is why I have alpha being acute. Now, just coming back to Zhao's point, right? This actually is the reason why I wanted this. Have a think about this for a moment, right? I'm starting above. And I'm coming back towards the origin, right? So when I'm thinking about, should I choose sine? Should I choose cos? I truly can think of either. Isn't cos kind of closer to what I want? I don't have to shift it quite so dramatically. I don't have to introduce such a massive phase shift. Does this make sense? It still works. It's just that you don't always get an acute angle down here. I've got A. I've got alpha. We already got N, right? Do I have a whole equation of motion? I do, right? So I can close this off. This is part A, OK? I can say back to here, x equals, let's put, it, put everything together, x equals 5, I think I said cos, right? Uh, 6t plus 0 0.9273, etc. I suppose this should be an approximately equals 2, but you get the idea. Like so. Okay. 
I probably should say, because we just had the conversation, but I didn't include it in my working. The reason why I've got um, alpha being acute here is alpha acute from one and two, like so. Is that all right? That, that's where I actually appealed to, to know that it had to be between naught and pi on two. Let me hit pause there. We have a part B to deal with, okay? Do you reckon you have enough steam in you to take this equation of motion that we just determined together and work out the next, what's the question? The next time that we come back to this same displacement here. Do you reckon you do that? Can I give you a few minutes to have a play? Then I'm gonna come back, show you a solution, and also show you what happens if you don't choose cause from the beginning. If you've got an answer, call me over and I'll give you a suggestion. <coughs>